but he is famous as the man who took on the cartels in Mexico and also who tackled corruption, which is probably, we're going to talk about that, it's probably the, the single most destructive issue in Mexico today and has been from its inception. So, and then we have Matthew Heineman, who is, uh, is Hollywood's IT documentary guy right now. If you haven't seen Cartel Land, we're going to play the preview again. Um, it's a, a spectacular documentary, a very, a very brave, courageous portrait on Matthew's behalf in, uh, across the border in Mexico and also down on the U.S. side of the border. So, and we have a couple clips from that we'll go to throughout. So for those people who don't know, the film really chronicles um, Americans on the American side of the border and uh, who, are, who have taken the law into their own hands in a sense, patrolling the border, taking it upon themselves to turn in anyone they find over to uh, over to the U.S. border control and, and other authorities in the area. And then on the other side of the border, the rise of what's known in Mexico as the auto defenses, which were people, who, vigilantes who really, in the absence of a real government, a real army, a real police force, rose up against the cartel in Michoacan and, uh, and filled the void. Uh, as you say, I'm, I'm from Michoacan. And what is happening there is these groups of criminals once they took the control of uh, Apatzingan or several cities and towns of the state, and once they reached an agreement with the government, the local government, it was almost impossible to clean up that situation. Why? First, you have to take a decision. Either let, I'll let them to do whatever they want, which is the tradition before myself, and that produced this advancement of the criminal, which is an incredible mistake in our recent history in Mexico. Or take action on them, fight them with full force of the state, and if the local police, under control of the criminals, do corruption or intimidation, you need to use federal forces. And I did so. But it's not enough. Second, you need to rebuild the law enforcement institutions. I started to establish betting process including polygraph exam, toxicological exam, either to be a member of the federal police of the, of the army, for instance, or to stay there. And I wanted to do at local level. And I talked with the governor and said, Governor, you need to fire these guys and even put them in jail because they are completely involved with the criminals. And the governor said, oh, yes, Mr. President, let me analyze that. One month later, I could not fire him. Why not? Because I have no money to do that. Well, this is the, here is the money. One week later, what happened, Governor? I could not because they belong to a very powerful union in government. Mm. So they never cleaned up the police. And we have a federal system like here in the state, which is just absurd for us. Because I, as president, I knew that. And I need to build a lot of judicial evidence. Otherwise, I could not remove the local police corps, which were, and you can see in the film, completely integrated with criminals. And if you are unable to build the law enforcement institutions reliable and powerful, which is needed, you can change the criminals, which happen in Michoacan, with other people at the beginning with honest motives, re rebelling themselves and taking the weapons for, uh, for themselves to remove the bad guys. And suddenly another group take over that movement with a lot of mistakes of the government, because the government tried to Instead to build a new police force, clean police force, strong police force, they tried to make an arrangement with the new group. And that group became the new criminals. And that's the sad story that Matthew is describing. So it's, a, it's the ugliest side of humanity.